class. Today we're going to cover our I Can Learn Warm and Cool Colors worksheet. Now, we're, we're just going to go over these because we want you to know about them. So warm colors are obviously red, orange, and yellow. They, sh you know, when you look at those colors, you tend to think of heat and the summertime. And cool colors are green, blue, and violet. And they show uh, cold, or they make you think of cold and the winter so, time. So, why do we need to know this? Well, uh, warm colors tend to jump out too. Cool colors tend to fall back and recede. And we know this for sure because uh, have you ever seen a green taxi cab or, oh, I don't know, uh, a fast food restaurant logo in the color purple? Sometimes, but rarely. Uh, orange, yellow, and red uh, can be actually seen further away than any other colors. So I believe red is the color. So that's why fire trucks are red. That's why yellow uh, tends to be for taxi cabs and school buses, as well as the color orange, because they're highly visible colors. And so, and then your greens uh, and your purples and, you know, um, and your blues tend to fall back. You know, in other words, uh, you're not going to see those as warning colors. So we're going to just take a peek at some artists who use both warm palettes, like you know, all of their color, colors tend to be warm or all of their colors tend to be cool. Now, these artists use both. Don't get me wrong. Don't think if I show you an artist, well, they only use warm colors. No, I'm just going to show you some paintings where they use a predominantly warm palette or a predominantly cool palette. And when you look at these pictures, I want you to think of how it makes you feel or what kind of mood is being set by using these colors. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with a very, very famous artist named Paul Cezanne. Now, here's a picture of some of his peaches. He's kind of famous for uh, painting fruit. Uh, and in this, he does a lot of landscape and countryside pictures as well. But in this case, we've got his peaches, which are very warm colors. So let's try a different one. This is a painting by Jacob Lawrence, and obviously he's got a lot of warm colors here. Those reds are pretty powerful. And then, but he also uses a lot of cool tones in the foreground. So think, how does this painting make you feel? How do these warm colors, and as you can see in here, there's sections of yellow, bright little spots of yellow and orange uh, all throughout. Uh, is this very exciting or is it very mellow? Now here is a very famous picture by an artist uh, that many people know about, uh, Vincent Van Gogh. So I have a couple of his pictures here. So these are definitely very, very warm colors. You can even see the light uh, radiating off the light fixtures. So. We're just going to look at this one for a little bit. And next, this is a painting. This is a kind of color field painting. So it's not really supposed to represent anything. It's a blending of certain colors. And in this case, uh, we've got red and orange and yellow, black and even white. How does this color make us feel? Next, here's another one by Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, as, as you can see, he's got a lot of warm colors, but then he does have a cool color in the background. And uh, as we talked about before, cool colors tend to fall back. So in other words, these sunflowers really pop and come forward, and then the background uh, recedes uh, because it's more of a cool color. So let's take a peek at this one and see how it makes us feel. Now, some of his paintings about sunflowers, by the way, have sold for literally tens of millions of dollars. So, um, he, so people have placed a ton of value on his sunflowers. 
might even be kind of interesting to ask yourself, why? What is it about these sunflowers? Now we're gonna switch to some artists with some cool palettes. So um, here we have a Japanese print by an artist named Hokusai. And this is a giant wave. So this is a tsunami, mostly cool colors. How does this make us feel? Now here is a painting by Pablo Picasso. He had a period of his life where many of his paintings were only the color blue and many, many shades thereof. So how does a painting that's predominantly blue make us feel? What is the mood of this painting? This is another abstract painting. In other words, they also call this non-objective. So in other words, there isn't any point in this painting where she is trying to render an object that we would be familiar with. And as you can see, it's predominantly blue. There is a little bit of warm colors right in this area, but this is by a painter named Helen Frankenthaler. And her paintings are obviously very, very cool. How does this make us feel? Here is another painting by um, an artist named Winslow Homer. He uh, has painted some boats in the Florida Keys. How do all these cool colors, the blues, the purples, how does that make us feel? And if you'll notice the red sweatshirt on the man and the red flag, boy, when you have a painting where it's mostly cool colors, those red colors really pop, don't they? Those warm colors. And here is one more water scene. This is by uh, James McNeil Whistler. And this is an oil painting from, it's a little bit older. And how does this make us feel? This is obviously a nighttime uh, picture of some boats on the water. You can see some buildings that are silhouetted, meaning we can only see their shapes. So how does that make us feel? Is it scary? Is it sad? Is it peaceful? Is it quiet? And then when you compare a picture like that with a picture and go all the way back to Jacob Lawrence, where you can see the busyness and the loudness and, uh, and the activity in a scene like that compared to a scene like this. Boy, you can really see the power that warm and cool colors have. Well, I hope uh, you learned a little bit about warm and cool colors, and I hope this becomes part of your vocabulary when you're describing great art.